a lot to say about what this bill has to offer. Well, I want to thank my, uh, uh, my friend from Colorado. Madam Speaker, we formed the Sustainable Energy and Environment Coalition in the 111th Congress because we believe in America's promise to become the global leader in energy and environmental strategies of the 21st century. Leadership and innovation is the hallmark of American success. In 1961, when President John F. Kennedy said that our country would lead the world by landing an American on the moon, within eight years, his goal was achieved with the Apollo project. Today, that same innovation is present in our emerging clean energy economy. Madam Speaker, the opportunity for America to create thousands of clean energy jobs that will build our 21st century economy cannot be understated. Evidence of that clean energy job growth, a key component of our local economic recovery, is already visible on the ground in communities like the, like the New Mexico's first congressional district, which I represent. Part of this clean energy cluster growth is a result of the vast natural resources that New Mexico has to share. We are second in the nation in solar energy capacity and 12th in the nation for wind energy production potential. But we also have invested heavily in our human capital. One example of this success is the work being done in partnership with Sandia National Laboratories, which has been at the center of multiple renewable energy advancements across our country, including the creation of a high-performing biofuel that can be used in military aircraft. With Sandia's help, thousands of jobs in new energy fields have been created in communities in, in our community by companies like Advent Solar and MCOR, which makes concentrated pho so, solar photovoltaics. Just a month ago, I participated in the grand opening of a $100 million shot solar manufacturing plant in Albuquerque, which is on track to eventually employ 1,400 people. On the west side of the 1st Congressional District, Solar Array Ventures is building a factory that will employ 1,000 people. And in the rural east side of our congressional district, hundreds of people have been at work with good paying jobs on the near complete 100 megawatt high lonesome wind, Mesa wind project. Madam Speaker, these jobs are part of a thriving clean energy cluster that is leading our community towards economic recovery. I'm proud to report that Albuquerque's clean energy job growth recently earned us a second place national ranking in Kipling, Kiplinger's 2009 list. Albuquerque was recognized for leading the nation in key job growth areas of tomorrow. The potential to create these kinds of clean energy jobs across our nation cannot be denied. And I'm proud that the 111th Congress has already been investing in our clean energy future. In the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act, we invested more than $60 billion to help jumpstart the clean energy jobs of tomorrow. These investments include building transmission lines to carry solar and wind to communities in need, improving battery technology, and training a new clean energy workforce and increasing energy efficiency to help our country use less energy while we strengthen our economy. I'm proud to have, co to have sponsored the Clean Energy Promotion Act, a bill that will expedite the review of wind and solar energy projects on our public Bureau of Land Management lands. And I also co-sponsored the National Renewable Energy Standard legislation that's included in the, uh, in the current legislation to increase our country's generation of energy from renewable sources. Madam Speaker, in New Mexico's first congressional district and across the country, we are at a crossroads. We can either cede leadership in clean energy innovation to nations like Germany, which has the highest solar generation of any country in the world, even though it only has the same average solar exposure as the state of Alaska. Or we can jumpstart the American clean energy industry, spurred by the same spirit of innovation that put us on the moon, to put Americans to work in clean energy careers, building solar panels and wind turbines. Let's choose the path of innovation, the path that has led to American success throughout our history. Now is the time to take bold action on our energy policy. And I would yield back to my friend from Colorado.
And, uh, you know, a question on that. You know, I've heard, I've heard supporters of this Republican inaction tax trying to argue that this bill costs jobs, that somehow this is going to be bad for the economy. A lot of what you've been talking about, I mean, a solar plant hiring 1,400 people in your district, job growth on the infrastructure side, it certainly sounds to me like by passing this bill, it's going to lead to even more job growth in your district. Is that is that what you've been finding? I believe that's absolutely the case. And in fact, what we've seen is that even in the midst of this recession, the good news on our horizon has been these quality high-tech jobs in the renewable energy sector. Yeah, the, another one, and earlier on, uh, as we were walking to the floor, we were talking about kind of American ingenuity and innovation, uh, and we talked about what's possible with solar cars, and I thought maybe you could share with us this story of what's possible. I mean, the strength of America has always been innovation and ingenuity, and I mean, I think this bill is really playing to our strength of a co as a country in terms of what's possible. I, I couldn't agree more, and I have to say, as a uh, as someone who got my degree in mechanical engineering back in the uh, in the mid 90s, I actually participated in a uh, in a solar car team, uh, just a group of college students that got together in the early 90s, built a, a carbon fiber, uh, lightweight solar powered vehicle that we raced across the United States against teams from Stanford and Michigan and, and other colleges around the country, um, and, and I always thought to myself if we, if we could do that in 1993, 15 years ago, a bunch of college students who didn't even have our degrees yet, um, then you know, the, the, to think of the potential that we have today with the technology and the real support of, of policymakers like yourself, uh, I think the opportunities for science and for business are absolutely endless. I see we've been joined by our colleague from New York, uh, Mr. Tonkin.